Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're delving into a topic critical to our health, yet often overlooked, magnesium. Approximately 52% of individuals make a significant mistake in their magnesium consumption, which increases the risk of heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, and weaker bones. We'll explore why magnesium is pivotal, the common errors people make, and how to ensure we're obtaining the correct amount. Firstly, even if blood tests indicate normal magnesium levels, individuals may still be deficient and vulnerable to preventable health issues. Let me explain why. Magnesium is an essential mineral involved in over 300 enzyme systems in the body. It's crucial for protein synthesis, muscle and nerve function, blood sugar control, and regulation of blood pressure. Additionally, magnesium supports bone development, DNA synthesis, and the production of the antioxidant glutathione. Magnesium also plays a vital role in transporting calcium and potassium ions across cell membranes, which is essential for nerve impulses, muscle contractions, and maintaining a normal heart rhythm. However, here's the catch with magnesium blood tests. The human body contains about 25 grams of magnesium, with 50 to 60% stored in bones and most of the remainder in soft tissues. Less than 1% is found in the blood, where levels are tightly regulated. Consequently, blood tests aren't reliable indicators of total magnesium levels or concentrations in specific tissues. While methods like saliva or urine tests exist, none are flawless. This contributes to the common mistake regarding magnesium intake, which we'll discuss later. So what evidence supports the idea that higher magnesium intake improves health? And can you spot a common error in interpreting this research? In 2010, a study of over 14,000 people found that higher magnesium intake correlated with a nearly 40% reduction in the risk of sudden cardiac death. Another study in 2013 involving more than 300,000 people showed a 30% lower risk of heart disease with higher magnesium levels. These correlations are compelling, but here lies the issue. Correlation does not imply causation. For instance, there's a correlation between the number of ice creams sold and the occurrence of shark attacks. This doesn't mean eating ice cream causes shark attacks. Both increase during summer months, which is the underlying factor. Similarly, the correlation between coffee consumption and car accidents doesn't mean drinking more coffee causes accidents. Both may stem from busy, stressful lifestyles where people drive more frequently and perhaps recklessly. These examples underscore the need for caution in drawing causal conclusions from correlations. When examining magnesium research, we find numerous correlations, but few randomized controlled trials, RCTs, to establish cause and effect. Large, long-term studies on magnesium are rare due to insufficient funding, leaving us with predominantly small, short-term studies that often yield conflicting results. For example, one RCT in 2018 demonstrated benefits of magnesium supplements for metabolic syndrome, whereas another did not. This inconsistency extends to well-known benefits such as improved sleep and relief from muscle spasms. In summary, magnesium is indispensable for health and higher intakes correlate with numerous benefits. However, the lack of RCTs hinders definitive establishment of cause and effect. Nevertheless, achieving the recommended daily intake of magnesium is crucial. Unfortunately, 48% of individuals fail to meet even the estimated average requirement, let alone the recommended intake of 420 milligrams for men and 320 milligrams for women. Additionally, about 52% of individuals with high blood pressure do not consume sufficient magnesium. The primary mistake people make is inadequate magnesium consumption and reliance on blood tests to gauge levels. Many recognize their low magnesium intake but fail to address it properly. Magnesium is abundant in leafy greens, legumes, nuts, seeds, and whole grains. Processed and refined foods strip away magnesium, leading to deficiencies. Instead of improving their diet, many turn to magnesium supplements. Supplements should complement a healthy diet, not replace it. We often advocate for maintaining a balanced diet and supplementing with 30% of the recommended daily magnesium intake to ensure requirements are met. This approach supports nutrition without replacing it. However, remember that this doesn't mean everyone should take a supplement. Each person is unique 
and some may require more or less additional magnesium depending on their individual circumstances. Now, which magnesium form is optimal? Exercise caution with labels. Magnesium oxide is common and inexpensive, but poorly absorbed. Magnesium citrate is also affordable, well-absorbed, and has a laxative effect that can be beneficial for some. Magnesium l 3 has gained popularity for potential cognitive benefits, but human studies show conflicting results. Our preferred forms are magnesium glycinate and magnesium taurate, both well-absorbed and offering additional health benefits from glycine and taurine. A crucial tip, recommended daily intakes are based on elemental magnesium. For instance, magnesium taurate contains only 8 to 9% elemental magnesium, requiring over 1,500 milligrams to achieve 126 milligrams of elemental magnesium. Always check labels for the elemental magnesium amount or the percentage of the recommended daily intake provided. Finally, here's another fascinating fact. Magnesium was once more prevalent in many regions' water supplies but modern processing methods have significantly reduced its presence. A 2017 study in Israel revealed a sharp decline in magnesium levels when the water supply switched to desalinated seawater. Similarly, Denmark observed lower magnesium levels in drinking water correlating with increased heart attacks, strokes, and atrial fibrillation. Today's heavily processed water and food diminish their magnesium content. Prioritizing whole foods can help achieve sufficient magnesium intake with supplements as a complementary consideration for a healthy diet. Thank you for tuning in. If you found this episode valuable, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more insightful health content. Wishing you all a long, healthy, and happy life. Until next time.